think one of the big drivers that's contributing to a lot of uncertainty right now for universities and perhaps society as a whole is really technological advancement. We've seen kind of what feels like very groundbreaking changes recently in the last few years, and it's really the technology has been around for several decades. But since probably around 2012, we've seen these almost quantum leaps with how AI in particular has developed. And so there's just been a lot of changes going on that are really putting us in front of new challenges. So I think one of the reasons why AI is such a big driver of changes right now is because it's what we call a general purpose technology, meaning it has lots and lots of applications in basically every industry. And so all of us are going to be confronted with this technology in some way or another, be it you know, teachers or students, um, really in any scenario. And so trying to figure out how to use this in a way that furthers our goals as a society is really one of the key challenges right now. Um, I see a lot of potential for students to have really tailored content to them and for systems to understand where they might need extra help and be able to get it when and where they need it. AI is really a very interesting technology across the board for everybody in education. So be it professors who might get help with structuring their lesson plans or creating better case questions for their students or the students themselves who get assistance with learning content in a much more intuitive way or maybe questioning their assumptions using AI tools. And then also on the administrative side, even in terms of organizing the entire learning journey for students, making sure we get all students on board, making sure we don't lose, for example, students who are first time attendees at universities. So there's really a broad spectrum of tools that are at our disposal. The challenge right now is figuring out how to use them correctly and when and where to use them and where to keep the human in the loop and make sure that we also include those um, specific powerful benefits of having humans there in the learning journey. Ultimately, the goal is obviously to help students. So I think that's an interesting and noble goal that we would have. And so I think we need to figure out the right formats to make data sharing comfortable for everybody. And in some ways that might mean going towards more open source solutions. So not having proprietary systems where students, for instance, don't have control over their data. Um, but yeah, I don't think we have the specific answers yet, but hopefully we'll get there as we work through the process. I think this is a very interesting point, this question of how AI will impact maybe the importance of our own research output. And I think for right now, it seems like it's maybe a bit um, different for different fields. Um, for example, mathematicians might already use AI to write proofs. And then what does that mean in terms of what a mathematician is contributing to knowledge production in that field? Um, for our field, I think at the moment, it's still very much about dialogue between individuals too. And so there's really a spectrum of areas where we can use it. At least at the moment, some of the AI tools do not do enough yet of really being specific enough to generate very new research in our field. I think this really depends on the field because you have other areas like the natural sciences where you can really scour content in a way that you would never have been able to do before and make advances much more quickly. And I think to a certain extent, understanding how you compare grades is again, just a matter of experience a little bit. Um, I think once people started using, you know, if you're not good at using Google search right now, your paper will be much worse. Or if you don't understand that, um, you know, depending on how good certain journals are, maybe you should lend more credence to one paper versus another. And so these are all sorts of heuristics that we have when we interact with various tools. So obviously Google search is a bit more simple than what an AI tool can do, but that's why I think it's really important to get students to conscientiously engage with the tools and understand how and when to use them and what their shortcomings are. Presumably students who understand the tools really well will ultimately write better papers too because they can um, speed up easy tasks and maybe go a little bit further to a certain extent that also means that the grading might become a bit tougher because the expectations will go up. So I think exams may very likely change in the future. We might see that we can go away from merely asking information, so doing simple multiple choice style questions and move towards other formats where we can try to understand how students collaborate and critically think about issues and solve problems, which I think are skills that will be much more important in the future.
I think this sort of conflicting demand that we have for the future wherein we need specific skills, but also we want people to generally understand how the world works so that they can deal with new technologies as they come up um, is a very crucial issue. And I think this will be a major area that we need to pay attention to as we adapt universities for the future to make sure that we do offer lifelong learning type programs where students can update their skills continuously as needed, but also set the right foundation so that they have the other more social skills um, and general skills to be productive and responsible leaders in society as well. I think we'll see some innovation in terms of the degrees that universities can offer. I do think that for basic education, so at undergraduate level, it's important to set a good baseline for students to succeed in the future. And this is also mirrored in what we saw with um, certain ed techs coming in, that students who have that baseline perform much better. But at the same time, I think we'll have a lot of opportunity to create new programs to address more specific needs of folks already in the workforce so that we can get them updated and being productive as they want to be. I think there's also a great opportunity to blend executive education with other formats at universities so people can exchange ideas and learn from practitioners as well as bringing in theory and I think getting that melting pot going will really be very fruitful for all students, be they executives or undergraduates. I do think we will still have universities in the future. I also see that the role of professors or instructors at the university may very well change as we progress because professors will have to fulfill a function that's closer to being a coach and someone facilitating the learning journey rather than someone who is just there presenting knowledge to students. And so I think the format within which we interact at universities will change pretty dramatically. I'm hoping it will change um, because I also think that kind of ecosystem where you know students and professors come together and there's really a lot of team-based learning as well will lead to much better outcomes than we can even hope for right now. <laughs> AI is very multifaceted, and we saw even with recent developments that there may be specific breakthroughs that come up that we weren't expecting at all. Even the folks who developed um, ChatGPT weren't expecting that particular system to perform so exceptionally well. Um, and so to that extent, I think we need to keep an open mind and try to stay flexible with what kinds of AI pops up. And also in terms of how we actually get potential or get value out of AI, I think there's a lot of human ingenuity that's still required in terms of thinking about ways to solve specific problems or come up with new and creative ideas that we might not have thought of before.